We interviewed Dee Wallace. I know you talked to her as well. Yeah. The carpet. We interviewed her, and she said something that always stuck with me. And this was like two years ago, I think, that we interviewed her. And she said, if you believe the good stuff that people tell you, then you have to believe the bad, too. So how do you keep from, because it seems like in this business, there's a lot of black and white. There's a lot of, oh my gosh, you're great. And then there's a lot of people that you can kind of tell that they don't think it's great or whatever it is and it's hurtful. Yep. So how do you keep that even keel? Because I think it is an interesting thing that she said. I remember when she said it, it really struck me. Wow. If you believe the good, then you have to believe the bad. And her point was to kind of just stay neutral to a lot of it. And how is that done? Uh, I, I mean, that's that's yeah. awesome. Um, you know, I, I got a brief interview with Dee on the carpet, and yeah, I, I mean, she had me tearing up. Like, there's something about her that just, I haven't read her book yet. I don't know if, if you have. I, 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 I want to get it. It's called Bright Light, which is just awesome. She has a radio show, too. Um, excellent. Yeah. You know, like, that's like, oh my God, the energy at that Braveheart Woman show. Um, yeah, um, it's funny because I, I actually experienced that recently. I had. I had some peers in this industry um, that didn't agree with the way I handled a situation that had happened in my career. Um, and some of the comments I heard were that I had burned a lot of bridges and that it was a small town and no one would ever want to work with me again. Um, and so a little bit of that gets in your head because you start thinking and, 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 you know, things that I were hearing were like, everybody's talking about it. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, I'm not really talking about it. I've only told, you know, my closest of closest. So if I'm not the one talking about it, then you guys got to be the ones talking about it if it's in your head. So then you start thinking, OK, well, God, how many people? are talking about this and how many people does it affect and so then like you know you tweet somebody and all of a sudden they don't respond and you're like oh god <laughs> do, are they not my friend anymore <laughs> like you know what I mean or do they think I'm a bad person um so yes it's so hard because at the end of the day though I have to go but you know what I also know there's all this love and I know there's this many people that love me and there's this many people and that and this and these people and that people and and this whole world over here that knows nothing about this world and that world. And so this is crazy talk right now, but like, yeah, you have to be like, I mean, what she said is true because yeah, if you're gonna, well, you kind of have to believe the good or else the bad will take you down, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that's maybe where she's coming from is that to get that neutral place. Yeah, because if all you listened to was the good, you would be some kind of, egomaniac, narcissistic kind of, I don't even know who's an example. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> um, and if all you listened to was the bad, then unfortunately you, you know, you'd probably end up taking your own life. You know, I know as artists we're just very sensitive creatures and there's been times in my life where, yeah, hurtful things have taken me down pretty low. And for me, right now, there's a lot of yoga. Um, trying to get into more meditation, trying to be around more productive, positive, spiritual people. And these are the things outside of our industry, I think, that we can do to help protect us, to help keep us, keep our spirits up, to keep our aura bright, to, to just keep oming and chanting and go, oh, you think I'm a B-I-T-C-H? Okay, om. <laughs> <laughs> so finding sort of this neutral thing that I think I heard Sandra Bullock one time say that she can't wait sometimes to just get out of LA and just mm -hmm. put her hands in the dirt somewhere and garden or do something that where it has nothing to do with acting and status and looks and how much money someone makes. So maybe finding something that is not about that mm -hmm. and having that as like your side. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean obviously. Sandra's coming from a place where she doesn't have to work 24-7 sure, <laughs> to sure. be able to go do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah, I would me. love to just go <laughs> dig in the dirt for a couple months. Can I come too? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, gosh, and I, and I probably don't do that enough. Um, because even like, you know, I do try to 
when you spend time with family and, and things like that, sometimes you can shut that off, um, put down the phone. And what's interesting is I, I've noticed recently, um, Bonnie Gillespie is a, is a mentor and, and friend of mine, and she tweeted something recently about She's, she, it was really funny and it was something like, I, I'm blocking you, not because of you, but to save me from going down the rabbit hole. This was just a general tweet that she tweeted. And I responded to her and I said, yes. And another great thing is when you do block someone, they seem to just poof, disappear out of your life, you know? Like, and all of a sudden you forget that they were even showing up in your stream of life, whether it be, you know, online or, or in the real world. And, and, you know, Bonnie responded and we got a laugh out of that. And um, yeah, I mean, I think the other thing is just to remove anybody that, that, you know, like just find those good people that are doing things. Like the Space Command team so far is just ridiculously awesome people. Like every day that I'm working with them, I'm like, well, you know, we're getting stuff done. Um, and, I've, and I think the thing is, is I, in this industry, I was blessed in the very beginning of my professional career, if you want to call it, you know, when I first got into SAG with, with the David Milches and the Seth Greens and the Matt Senricks and, you know, of the world where these people are like awesome. Like they're very giving and very generous. And even not having an agent or a manager, you're not going to, you're not worried that your paycheck's going to show up, <laughs> you know, from, you know, from Deadwood or Robot Chicken. You're not worried about those things. You're not worried what the contract says because you, you know it's, you know it's cool, <laughs> you know. Um, but then when you're out here on your own, back in this indie world, um, gosh, it's like every man, woman, and child for themselves sometimes. And so you have to really, really build a supportive community of people around you, uh, which is something that Bonnie Gillespie had helped me uh, formulate. She had a class rules. I think she still does it. It's self-management for actors is what it's called now. But class rules was a class that I was in for about a year. Um, and we went weekly, and it was a roundtable discussion. Each week had a focused topic, you know, maybe you're talking about headshots and managers and agents that week, or maybe you're talking about what your type is and where you should be going that week, but it was, you know, it wasn't about getting up and doing acting classes, so to speak. It was more about building your marketing tools in your community, and from that, we formed a little email list where you know that somebody on that list is going to have your back if you're like, hey, I need, uh, you know, a second AD for this shoot that we've heard about, or hey, I've heard about this job, paying gig over here. Um, and it's like the, your class, you know, just like in high school and college. It's, there's an entertainment class, I think, that kind of grows together. Um, I recently interviewed my friend Glenn Sobel. He's currently on tour with Alice Cooper. He's their drummer. <laughs> and I've known Glenn for about 12 years when he first moved to town and he was playing with a band called Beautiful Creatures. And so I got a chance to interview Glenn uh, this past summer in Philadelphia. I do a little web series called Living on a Dream. And that was kind of what we were talking about was like how cool it is to see like everybody from that 10 years ago here in Hollywood where they kind of are right now. And for me, it was a lot of music people, you know? So my friend Glenn is playing with Alice Cooper. My friend DJ plays with Guns N' Roses and Glenn and DJ used to be in a band together. And it's just like, I have another girlfriend that just got off the road with Duran Duran and another girlfriend that's on the Cirque du Soleil, the Michael Jackson immortal tour. And it's just, you, you can always get out of the like daily nitty gritty of the competition and just take a look around and see like, this is my community, this is my class, and look at where we're all going. It's, and a lot of yoga. <laughs>